Hi, Sarah Star speaking here. Now I've had a ton of requests from people asking me, you know, what are my favorite plugins I use when I install uh, like a new version of WordPress? So I've decided to make a couple of videos for you. Um, uh, the video today is gonna be all about uh, free plugins or kind of like essential plugins that I install pretty much with every brand new WordPress installation. So I'm gonna cover things like, um, you know, security um, plus other just useful plugins that I've found over the years that I always Always install um, on any new WordPress plugin. Um, in, a, in a future video, what I'll also be doing are um, a, is a set of videos all about premium plugins, plugins that you have to pay for, um, which I kind of install on, on most of my blogs as well. But today we're just going to talk about some essential free WordPress plugins. So this is one of my uh, newer sites, uh, Sarah Tutorials. And I thought I'd just show you this site because uh, this is actually uh, one which I've just installed uh, a load of uh, brand new plugins. So the first plugins we're going to look at are um, security plugins. Now, um, security plugins are very, very important with uh, with WordPress. Now, th the great thing about WordPress is you know it's easy to use. A lot of people use it. It's it's very, very. It, it's one of the biggest uh, website platforms out there right now for installing websites on. In other words, more people are using WordPress than any other platform. Platform to build websites, uh, which is a good thing because it, it means that uh, you know it, it, there are lots of plugins available, lots of tutorials. Uh, a lot of people know how to use it, uh, and it's kind of a stand. It's become standard really for building websites, but that has its downsides as well. Uh, it also means there are a lot of people who target WordPress websites when they want to hack into things. So a lot of hackers will, will target WordPress. Uh, just like a lot of t hackers will 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 target uh, Windows because it's the biggest uh, operating system out there. A lot of people will target Android because it's the biggest mobile phone platform out there. Uh, and in the same way, a lot of people will target WordPress because it's the biggest website building platform. So it's very very important to have uh, you know security uh, plugins on your website very similar to how you have you know virus protection software on, on your home PC and it's it's exactly the same um, on a WordPress site if you, if you don't have um, security plugins on your site uh, sooner or later your site uh, will get hacked and particularly if your site starts to get any kind of serious traffic uh, you know it's only a matter of time before your website will get hacked and it, it's a it's a real pain uh, particularly if you're making money from your site you've then got to get it sorted out um, I was talking to one of my uh, mentoring students recently and he was telling me that he hosts his websites uh, with HostGator uh, which I actually wouldn't recommend that you do anymore um, and he told me that you know one of his uh, so a load of his websites got hacked and um, you know someone took over his websites in other words and uh, HostGator, I think they wanted something like seventy or eighty dollars per website to fix it. Uh, to, to in other words, to uh, you know, to, to get control back of his website. So it can be quite an expensive process. Uh, not all website hosting companies, by the way, will, will charge you for that. Um, I'm with Liquid Web, and they they don't charge for that. Um, but you know, it's, it's worth bearing in mind. Um, in the past, when my sites uh, have been hacked. This is before I was using security plugins. Um, I, I actually hired an outsourcer just to sort it all out for me. Um, so that's that's how I got around it. And it didn't cost me much. It cost me about 20 or $30 to get all my sites uh, back again. But it can be a real pain and you've got to find someone sorted out and it costs money. So why not have some plugins to install on your website uh, to stop this happening? So the first uh, plugin I'd recommend that you use is something called Limit Login um, Attempts. So uh, let me just uh, type that in. So uh, to find this, all, all you need to do is go to the plugin section on your WordPress site and uh, click on um, add new and then you'll see a search box. Um, and then I'm just going to type in uh, limit login attempts into the search box and hit return. And you can find it directly by doing a search within your plugin section uh, within um, WordPress. I've got here limit login attempts. Uh, you can see it's, it's had over 166 reviews. Uh, it's had over you know, a million people are using this plugin and it's got a really good um, uh, rating. Uh, a lot of plugins, you know, you, you find, you know, the thing about WordPress is they're constantly updating new versions of WordPress constantly. Every week, it seems, there's a new um, version of WordPress to install. And it's important to install those updates. Um, however, software quite often, you know, plugins will say, so for instance, limit login attempts right now, it says untested with your version of WordPress. Um, you know, I, I, 
have never really had a problem with that. I'm, I'm using it with the current version of WordPress and it's working fine. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, so you need to worry about it if it says, you know, it doesn't work with your current version of WordPress. Um, so, you know, don't worry too much about that. I, I'm using it and, it and it works fine. So limit login attempts, completely um, free to install. So let's go and have a look at it. So I, I've I've actually installed it um, on, on my website. I just sure I'd show you very, very quickly what it can actually do. So it, it does pretty much um, what, what it sounds, you know, what, what it sort of says in the title of the product. Um, and, and that is uh, what it will actually do is if someone puts in the wrong password um, of your website, it will only allow um, that person to have a certain amount of errors before it will lock them out. So in other words, uh, on my site, if you put the password in f uh, wrongly four times, um, it will lock somebody out for 20 minutes. And then, you know, so for instance, if I'd forgotten my password and I put it in wrong four times in a row, um, I wouldn't be able to log into my site for 20 minutes. And then if I tried another four times and it was wrong again, it would lock me out for 24 hours. Um, and then I'd have to wait for 12 hours to reset it. So, um, and, and, you know, all these, uh, you can see here, all, all the uh, these settings are changeable in the back end. Those are just the defaults. I just leave it on default. But if you wanted to, I could change that to six uh, allowed uh, you know, retries or, you know, one retry or whatever. I could I could change that if I wanted to. Um, but this is important because quite often people will have very weak passwords. Um, and uh, there are software products out there which hackers use, which just find brand new WordPress uh, websites uh, automatically and then they'll just try thousands of passwords until they finally are able to log in. Um, so, you know, if, if your website has this plugin, it will lock them out after 20 minutes. So uh, it will it will block most people being able to log in uh, that way, just trying to guess your password. So that's a, that's what it does. Um, it has a few other, you know, straight uh, little uh, few other um, uh, features. Um, you can also uh, what you can do is you can also activate here, it says email. Um, so it will actually send you an email if somebody has been locked out four times. Um, I used to leave that checked, but you'd be amazed. If you leave that checked, you'll be amazed how often you receive those emails. So I actually leave it unchecked now um, because otherwise I, I, you know, I'm getting like emails every day. Like several, I was at one point getting like 10, 20, 30 emails a day. That's how many people are trying to hack into my site. It's quite scary, actually. So um, I just leave that unchecked. So that's limit login attempts. Really useful um, uh, tool. Definitely recommend you use it. So the next uh, security plugin is something called WordPress Firewall. Very simple plugin. I'm just going to search for it now again in exactly the same way within uh, WordPress. So here we go. WordPress Firewall. Uh, it's had 10,000 uh, installs. Uh, you know, I'm sure there are other products which might be very, very similar. This is just what I'm doing in this video is just showing you what I use on my site. I seem to have no problems with it. It works absolutely fine on the current version of WordPress. So WordPress firewall, um, it's a firewall for your website. Um, I'm not really that technical a person. Um, all I know is, uh, you know, this this uh, software has stopped my um, website being hacked now for several years. I've had any websites hacked since I've been using uh, WordPress firewall. Uh, I just use all the settings pretty much as they are as it comes. So this is the settings page. I, I don't change anything on here. Again, you can put in uh, an email address to be notified if somebody is trying to hack your site. I actually just leave that off. Um, you know, so, you know, if you want to, you can leave that on. Um, and, and, and those are the two security plugins uh, which I, I recommend. So limit login attempts and WordPress firewall. Okay, so uh, the next plugin is something um, which I find actually very, very useful. It's one of these real useful tools called Quick Page Post Redirect. So I'll just quickly search for it now and then explain what it is. So uh, Quick Page Post Redirect um, is uh, a plugin which you can actually do an automatic page redirect. Um, so this is particularly useful. Um, I, I find this very useful if I'm, let's say I'm, I'm promoting um, something that has a time limit on it. So let's say it's a, a new product launch, uh, a live event like a workshop or, or um, a webinar or something like that. Let's say I create a post about uh, so let, let's say I create a post about um, a live a live event, uh, a workshop or, or, or a webinar. And let's say it's happening um, on the 21st um, of January. So I, I create a, a blog post all about it or a video or something like that. 
uh, advertise it on my blog. And then um, after the 21st, uh, you know, the event's finished. Um, but you know, obviously, if, if the page is still on my website, people might find it and get confused. And then that's kind of like wasted traffic. So um, rather than just delete the post, um, what you can actually do is you can redirect that post to um, any other place. So if someone visited that, uh, let's say that link was pasted on another website or someone was reading an old email or something like that, um, you can redirect all the traffic from that old post to and any any way you want to a, to a brand new web page. So let's say uh, you could redirect that traffic to a page talking about your next live event or something like that. Or maybe it's to uh, an opt-in form where you where you say sign up here to be notified about our next workshop or our next uh, webinar. So uh, that's really cool. The other thing it's useful for is uh, for expired affiliate offers. So sometimes when you promote products as an affiliate, uh, you know six months after you've been promoting it or a year after you've been promoting it, like the product gets discontinued or maybe it's something you don't want to pr promote anymore because it's out of date. So what you can do is you can just redirect the traffic from uh, that original post to a brand new post, which is a bit more up to date. So uh, that's what I use a uh, quick page post redirect for. I'll just quickly show you how it works. So uh, the way it works is to so say this was uh, a post, uh, an existing post on my website. If we scroll down below the post, uh, there's a section here which says quick post redirect. So we can just say make uh, redirect active. And then we can just literally just put in a, a destination URL. So what we're saying is anyone who visits this web page redirect them to this web page. So really useful plugin. Um, you can even use this plugin actually to cloak your affiliate links if you know uh, what I'm talking about with that. If you know what cloaking is, um, uh, that's covered in a separate video actually, but uh, you could use this as a kind of crude um, affiliate cloaking uh, software product. Um, but yeah, so that's a, a really good uh, plugin which I, I normally install on most of my websites. Okay, the next two plugins are plugins which I use to hide WordPress posts and hide WordPress pages. Um, so the, these are really useful if you, let's say you, you've, you've got a theme which has uh, the pages um, featured along the top of the uh, actual uh, theme itself um, and you don't want it to appear in the menu. Um, or let's say you've got a, a WordPress post or a WordPress page and you don't want it to be uh, public. So quite often I'll, I'll have uh, pages on my website. Um, so for instance, uh, let's say there's a, um, um, I've got my mastermind group at my workshop. Um, I'm doing a workshop with my mastermind group. Well, let's say I'm doing a live seminar um, and at the end of the seminar, I say to people, OK, well, you know, to get the seminar notes or, or the webinar notes or whatever it might be, just go to sarahstar.com workshop one. So I might say that to get the notes for that live event, for instance. Now, I wouldn't want anyone visiting my website to be able to see that page um, or find it within the menu of the website or on the sitemap. Um, so sometimes, you know, you want to be able to hide pages um, or posts from um, your, your, you know, from public view on your website. Um, so this is what I use. So there's there's two different plugins. There's WP Hide Post and there's WP Hide Pages. Um, so those are two separate plugins um, and I, I've been using them for a long time actually. Um, and I'll just quickly show you how it works. They both work very, very similar way. So uh, within your actual post itself, so here I've got an existing post on uh, sarahstar.com um, and you can, you've got some options here. You can hide it from the front page. You can hide it from the category page. You can hide it on the tag page, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, you know, or you can hide it just from, from everywhere if you want to. Um, so if you want, you can you know, hide it just from one page um, or you can hide it from the whole website, which is pretty cool. So um, that's WP um, Hide Pages and WP um, Hide Posts. Okay, the next uh, plugin uh, is something I use for editing um, actual posts, um, and it's something called Ultimate Tiny MCE. There are lots of different versions of this product. This is just the one I use. Again, it's yeah, you know, it says it hasn't been updated for a year. It's uh, untested on your version of WordPress. I have no problems with it. it seems to work fine. Um, you know, you can see it's been activated over a hundred thousand times. Got a really good star rating there. Um, what this plugin allows you to do is have a little bit more control over what you can and can't do on a post, like you know, create bold text, uh, larger fonts, etc. So. Um, 
So now this is Sarah Star Post. So with WordPress, the kind of editing capabilities are quite limited. Um, so what I can do with this tiny MC is created, uh, give me extra options on the WordPress post um, toolbar. So um, when I've created, uh, written some text, I've actually, I can actually now choose the font size I want. Um, I can choose the type of font, you know, whether it's Arial or, or New Times Roman. I've said here that I want the post to be the, uh, sorry, the title to be uh, 24 point. I can cho now choose the color, uh, etc. And uh, once you've installed this plugin, so you can find it just by typing in Ultimate Tiny MCE into your plugin section and you'll find it there. This actually gives you another menu within uh, WordPress. And uh, there are a ton of different options you can add to your brand new tool toolbar. Um, I, I don't normally add all of these, but there are you know there's everything from you know selecting your font, the font size, um, highlighting color, text color, um, all sorts of options. There's, there's about thirty or forty different options. Um, I don't install all of them, but uh, you can add as many different options to your toolbar um, as you like. So that's. Um, Ultimate Tiny MCE, really useful tool just for being able to create um, uh, easily editable text within a WordPress post and make your post look uh, much better. So in other words, it, it makes the WordPress um, a text editor much more like Microsoft Word um, or something like that. So uh, that's Ultimate Tiny um, MCE. Okay, and the final plugin I'm going to recommend isn't something I install on all websites, but it is a really useful tool, and it's called WP Polls. Uh, what this enables you to do is to put a very short survey um, in the sidebar of your uh, blog or within a blog post itself, um, and then people can choose a, uh, a result and uh, give you uh, some quick feedback. So, for instance, on, on my website here, I've put a, a very quick poll which says, uh, what video tutorial... Um, should I make next? And then I've got keyword research, website hosting, outsourcing, or shopping carts. So um, what I could do is I could just, um, I've literally just put this on, so no one's answered this yet. Um, so I'm going to put, uh, let's see, uh, uh, shopping carts, and then click on vote. And uh, there we go. And then it tells us the results um, of the survey. So we can see I've only had one vote. So shopping carts is at the top of the list. But um, this is really useful uh, for finding out uh, information about your customers. Um, I, I did this a little while ago about different products. So I, I created one on, on sarahstar.com saying, which product should I make first? And I got some really interesting uh, results. And uh, the list building product came out actually on top, uh, which surprised me, which is why I'm currently making a brand new product all about email list building. So that's WP Polls. Again, you just find it by searching for WP-Polls uh, and you'll find it there within you know WordPress uh, search there. Um, and then, um, to actually create a poll, I'll just quickly show you. It's it's dead simple. We just uh, literally just click on um, add poll, and you just type in your question there, and you just put your answers, and you can add as many answers as you like, and then you can obviously analyze uh, those results. So that's WP poll. So Okay, um, hope you found uh, this tutorial useful. I will be posting uh, this up to uh, the website. Um, so if you haven't seen it already, it will be on sarahstar.com and I'll also put it on my new site, sarahtutorials.com um, as well. Uh, if you found this uh, useful or if you have uh, any comments indeed, please do comment uh, below this video and feel free to share this on Facebook.